Hello, Oscillator Sync here. Microtonal music is so hot right now, or at least it was in 2019. Perhaps it's passe now, but I'm going to talk about it in this video anyway. I'm going to very briefly describe what I mean by microtonal in a moment, but I'll say up front that if you want to get a more in-depth discussion and more musical examples, then I recommend heading over to Adam Neely's channel where he's done a bunch of really fantastic videos on the subject. I'll link to some in the video's description. But, as a primer, in Western music there's this fairly universal construct called an octave. If you take a note with a fundamental frequency and then double that frequency, you get an octave. So for example, if you take concert pitch A with its fundamental at 440 hertz, and then you play a note at 880 hz that's an A, an octave above. In Western music, we take the space between a note and the octave above it and split it 12 times, giving us 12 notes in each octave, a 12 tone musical system. The way that we usually split up the octave is based on a set of ratios defined as equal temperament. Equal temperament is a kind of musical mathematical trick that results in a set of notes that sound pretty pleasant or consonant, no matter what key or scale you play in. Certainly good enough for jazz. There are many other tuning systems that, if you make the promise not to change the scale or key, will actually sound sweeter than equal temperament, but can sound dissonant if you modulate away from it. Equal temperament then is a compromise, but it's probably one worth making if you want lots of instruments to sound good together no matter what music they're playing. Microtonality asks and answers the question, what happens if I split up the notes differently? What if I stick with a 12 tone scale, but change the way the notes are split up? What if I stick with the concept of an octave, but split it five ways or 13 ways or 25 ways and so on? What if I ignore the idea of an octave and define a different fundamental interval? This can lead to a whole new world of musical colors, sometimes beautiful, sometimes challenging but charged with musical emotions previously unavailable to you, and sometimes just plain ugly. But perhaps it's ugly that you need in your music sometimes. There are a range of synths available today that allow you to switch between predefined or even port your own microtonal scales. Most notably at the more affordable end of the market, Korg caters to microtonal enthusiasts very nicely with the Monolog, Minilog, and actually even the Vulcan Modular, which allows for microtunings, which is very cool. At the time of recording, the Microfreak does not allow you to formally make use of microtunings, but that doesn't mean that you can't explore microtonality. And in this video, I'm going to explore some of the options available to us as I go hunting for new musical flavors. Okay, here is a basic non-microtonal patch. It's based on the uh, harmonic, the, har yeah, the harmonic uh, oscillator. Um, those of you who are familiar with Microfreak may already be anticipating that we are going to be heading into the mod matrix in order to do something. Uh, so on the left hand side of the mod matrix we have the pitch uh, destination and we have our various different sources down uh, the side here. Now of course the thing that we'd usually do with the pitch uh, would be to apply just a little bit of pitch modulation to get a Of vibrato, which is lovely, obviously, but that's not where we're going uh, today. So, for my first suggestion, um, what we're going to do is we're going to head uh, down to the next row, which is pressure. So, if I apply some modulation and I'll put in um, a value of one, and at the moment, with the patch based off an initialized patch, what's going to happen now is as I apply pressure, you can hear that I can get uh, some pitch bend. Let me make it a little bit more obvious. So as I put more of my finger down, I get a pitch bend. Now the neat thing, of course, on the Micro Freak is that this um, pressure is actually polyphonic, so I can bend one note sharp while leaving the other one in place. So with pressure as our um, modulation source, having a value of um, two for our modulation amount will give us a semitones bend. Uh, which is uh, great if you want to do these sort of bends like this, but that's not actually the way I'm going to approach this. There's nothing wrong with approaching it this way. I'd probably move the value down to one, so we have a half, uh, sorry, a quarter tone rather, I should say. Uh, 
and with careful playing you could slide into sort of half sharp tones but you will always get that gliding thing happening so what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to head into the utility menu I'm going to go to preset and I'm going to scroll down until I get to pressure mode here so pressure mode at the moment will be set to aftertouch which is what we're getting at the moment with our polyphonic aftertouch there what I'm going to set it to instead is velocity so that means now what I do afterwards is going to make no difference but how I play the note itself does so we can do by playing carefully We can do these sort of half, uh, half resolution things like. You probably have to be a better keyboardist than me. Now that's going to get trickier since you use more than two fingers, I suspect. But it might get really interesting if we move to a way of sequencing the velocity. Okay, so I've just gone and got my Keystep Pro, uh, but everything I'm going to show you here you could happily do in the door really, really easily. Uh, you could also do this on any other controller that's going to allow you note by note control of uh, velocity. So basically, got the um, patch from before, just made it a little bit more mellow for reasons that will become uh, clear. I've also added uh, reverb on. Uh, the other thing I've done with this patch is that I've set the uh, pressure or rather velocity to pitch to uh, two in the mod matrix, which means when I press it very lightly, we get the real note. And when I press it with as much of my finger on as possible, we get a uh, semitone up. So what I've done on the key step here, if we go into the step edit here, when we look at this first um, chord here, we can see that we've got these notes that are lit up on it. And if I go into each of those notes, um, we'll see that the velocity for each of those notes is set to zero. That's actually zero. It doesn't look like it, but it, it is. And as I go into other steps and take a look at the velocity for the various notes in the step, you'll see that actually I've got them set to different uh, velocities. So. What that means, I think this one's probably a good example here, step six, uh, all of the steps in this one, you probably can't see it because it's uh, in the shadow of the knob, but uh, the uh, velocity for each of these is set to 64, which is the center point, which means in terms of our um, routing on the, uh, on the uh, micro freak, that means that we're going to be up a quarter tone. So it allows us to get these really dreamy kind of feelings. So this first step is in concert pitch. This is about uh, a quarter flat, uh, a half flat. That's half sharp. I think that's back in concert pitch, as is that. And then that's just slightly sharp, I think. About a half sharp. And this is something that Adam nearly uh, spoke about in one of his videos about uh, microtonal stuff for kind of lo-fi feelings and that is that if you alternate between your um, micro tunings between say concert pitch and half sharp it doesn't feel anywhere near as jarring it still sounds dreamy and sort of uncertain uh, but it's still kind of working and of course if you have a door or, or, a, or a, a, a controller which allows you per um, per note velocity you know you can tweak one note within a chord for example to be slightly sharp or slightly uh, flat by using the velocity and any synth that allows a 
uh, matrix mapping between uh, the velocity and the pitch of a note, you can do this on. This is a, a trick that will work on a lot of different synths, whether or not they support microtonality at all. Okay, let's take a look at another approach. This one I have to say is probably my favorite. So I've got a little carpless strung uh, patch set up here, which is uh, uh, nice. Nothing particularly special going on there, but you know, the carpless strung algorithm always sounds good. Uh, now, if we think about the way that the internal modulation matrix is wired, on the microfreak, there's probably one source of modulation that we don't really think about because it seems so in, sort of intrinsic to the way that we play the keyboard, and that is that the keyboard is a modulation source for the pitch. So when I play one key up, it's going to modulate our pitch by a semitone at a time, right? So there is actually a modulation source implicit in the keyboard. And what's really interesting about the microfreak is that uh, modulation source is actually represented on this final row here where it says key up. Now the place that you would usually take this, I suspect, uh, is uh, with your cutoff to make uh, it brighter at the top and darker at the bottom. And that's a perfectly legitimate way of, of using it. The old uh, uh, filter tracking, keyboard tracking, is a classic, and for good reason. But, as we've already seen, one of our destinations is indeed the pitch. So what happens when we apply uh, an, a modulation amount to our keyboard against the pitch? So if I just hold these two notes down here so that they drone, Essentially what's going to happen when we change uh, the modulation amount away from zero, if we go negative, it's going to bring those notes closer together. And if we go positive, it's going to spread them apart. Now. Without any modulation applied, that's an octave. So by spreading or compressing these uh, uh, these notes, we're going to get microtonal intervals across our keyboard, and it's basically going to throw our keyboard into a non-standard layout, if you like. I've found this to be quite an interesting way to approach the instrument. Um, what I usually do, there's probably a scientific way of doing this to work out precise modulation amounts, but the way I usually approach it is I play uh, an interval, for example a, 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 a minor seventh there, and then as we change the modulation amount, I go looking for points at which that works again, and then I explore what I have. So we've got those notes there kind of work with some interesting clashes. You kind of got a half, half or rather quarter note happening there. And you get these interesting textures. You might need to explore a little bit because I'm going to sound just bad. That has a vibe. And of course, if you find intervals that you like, but you want to make them a little bit more playable, we can of course adjust the layout a little bit. You find some of these things which are quite beautiful, 
That's nice. It's still lining up quite nicely there. Starts to get that little bit of unease. Properly discorded. Trying different registers. Because of the way that it's going to spread it, things are going to be more extreme at either end of the uh, octave range as well. And you are going to essentially have to relearn the keyboard a little bit. we could think about also applying uh, pressure as a source to our uh, to our pitch as well so that we have the opportunity to bend things into tune if we need and of course you would never find some of these intervals across the keyboard normally because of course they don't exist and that's kind of exciting to me let's try a different uh, interval let's uh, expand rather than compress so maybe let's go for to bend that note sharp there is quite useful and you can find all of these textures that simply not be available otherwise of course you're probably not going to be sat quite nicely on the root of your um, of your uh, other instruments, so you're probably going to be out of tune, even at the root. So you might want to go into preset here. Uh, oh, sorry, not in preset, is it? You may want to go into master tuning and look at the scent offsets to push whatever you choose to be your root towards uh, what you're actually playing in. Uh, or not, you know, because sometimes that might be fun as well. The other thing that is really uh, quite exciting sometimes is to make use of the chord uh, function. So um, if we hold on. So I think the other place where this sort of expansion compression of the keyboard works really well is sort of in your, your sort of acid world, where you have a, a bass line, uh, and you know, bass lines get stale when they're actually playing normal notes, so let's see what happens if we 
Make things a bit more nasty. And again, you may want to go into your uh, utilities, into your master tuning, and find where your root note now lives. I think this is quite a cool way of finding evil sounding. Baselines. That don't live within normal scales. That top note is kind of like a half sharp thing going on. The other three kind of in tune now. Throw some spice. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed that and had fun in our little excursion through microtonality. If you did, then make sure you give the video a thumbs up and uh, make sure that you're subscribed to the channel as well so you don't miss out on any upcoming uh, synth fun and weirdness. As always, thank you so much for joining me. Until next time, take care. Bye-bye.